good day. My name is Jacques Duplessis. I am currently a third year engineering student at Stellenbosch University and I'm doing vacation work at Optimum Solutions. So for this demo, I'm going to talk to you about how to use the signal processing toolbox with MATLAB. On the agenda today, we're going to have an introduction to the toolbox, we're going to look at how we can generate and measure signals, we're going to look at a signal filtering example and then two more common application examples. So firstly, as an introduction, I'm sure we all know how signals affect us in everyday life. They are used in cell phones, in medical devices, in GPS systems, financial analytics, and then some research areas as well. And then the concept of signal processing is even found in memes. <laughs> okay, so firstly, I want to emphasize why we are using MATLAB. So MATLAB is very easy to use. This means it will transform the way you work. MATLAB lets you visualize what you want to see in an intuitive way. So when visualizing data becomes as easy as with MATLAB, you're not thinking about formulas and specific use cases. You're seeing the whole picture and interacting with the concept and implications rather than the maths and the data. The result is that you can focus on creatively getting the data to work for you in new ways. So the basic workflow of MATLAB is shown in this slide. Firstly, to get the data into MATLAB, you can use files like binary files or Excel spreadsheets. You can get data from other software applications as well and from hardware also, which we will look at later. Once you have the data in MATLAB, you can analyze and measure your data, develop algorithms and applications. And then once you have processed the data, you can export it via Word documents or PDF documents, or you can um, convert to C code if you want to deploy on hardware. So for this presentation, I'm only going to focus on the explore and discover section in the middle. So what are the key features of the signal processing toolbox? The first is you can generate signals and visualize them. You can perform signal transforms from the time to the frequency domain and vice versa. You can design analog and digital filters and analyze and implement them. You can employ statistical functions to highlight some aspects of your data. And MATLAB has some nice power spectral density estimation algorithms that can show you the power spectral density of your signals. Now this list is not exhaustive. There are a lot of other functions that the signal processing toolbox has as well. So moving on then to a signal generation example. We're firstly going to look at how we can generate some commonly used signals. So if we go to MATLAB, firstly, we specify the frequency, the sampling frequency and the frequency of the signals. And then we can just use built in functions like square, sawtooth, sine and chirp to plot some known signals in MATLAB. Okay, so when that is plotted, we can see the result is very simple. So if we maybe want to look at this chirp signal then, we see in the time domain it doesn't really give us a lot of information. So what we can do is we can plot the spectrogram of the signal and then see what the frequency does with respect to time. Okay. So here we can see that the majority frequency components varies linearly with time. So going back, how can we acquire and process real world signals for MATLAB? So the answer is there are many different ways. Here are some of the hardware ways you can get signals into MATLAB. So you can use the instrument control toolbox to get data from oscilloscopes and signal generators. Then you can use the data acquisition toolbox to get data from USB and PCI protocols. And then you can get data from cameras and from vehicle toolboxes. And also MATLAB has interfaces for communicating with nearly everything. So the example we're going to look at is sunspots. So firstly, sunspots are temporary phenomenon where intense magnetic activity on the surface of the sun inhibits the normal convection. So consequently, cooler or dark spots appear on the surface of the sun. 
So for this example, we would like to determine the solar cycle using the sunspots data. So we know the solar cycle is 11 years and we would like to verify this using that data. So we are going to look at the time series analysis and the frequency series analysis to get the same results. So going to MATLAB. Okay, so firstly, if we plot the, the number of sunspots per year, it looks like this. So we would like to see where the majority of sunspots lie. To do that, we can use the find peaks function to plot the local maxima of each six year period. Once that is plotted, we can see that the local maxima is highlighted with red markers. So in order to get the distance between them or the period, we can use the diff function and then just calculate the mean. We see the cycle is 10.86 years, which corresponds quite nicely to the known value of 11 years. So we can do the same in the frequency domain using a discrete Fourier transform. So MATLAB has a built-in function FFT, which computes the fast Fourier transform of a signal. So for this example, we're only interested in the fluctuations. So we can remove the mean from the signal and then only plot the fluctuations. Doing that, we can see that the largest frequency component lies about at 0 0.09, which is the reciprocal of 11. So we get the same result in the frequency domain as well. Moving back to the presentation. So that concludes that example. Looking at signal filtering, we know there are various challenges in filter design, like you would like to design your filters quite rapidly, you want to move through different filter architectures quite fastly, you would like to have your design process as streamlined as possible, and once you have designed your filter, you would maybe like to deploy the filter on hardware devices, so you would want to design for implementation. Of course, MATLAB has solutions. You can select from many predefined application specific filters. You can design in floating point and then convert to fixed point to iterate fast. And you can visually explore design methods and analyze responses. Also, you can generate MATLAB functions, simulink models, and C code from the filters. So, this example, we are going to look at how to analyze an ECG signal. In the time domain, an ECG signal looks like this. So we can see there's a linear trend associated with the signal. So firstly, we would like to remove that. And then uh, we would like to remove the high frequency components because that doesn't help us in analyzing the signal. And then we would like to compensate the delay introduced by the filter. So this is the workflow we are going to do for this example. Going to MATLAB. So firstly, we load the signal into MATLAB and then we can plot it in the time domain as shown in the slides as well. So firstly, as I said, we would like to remove this linear trend from the signal. To do that, we can use the dtrend function. So the dtrend function, as shown here, simply removes the mean value or linear trend from a vector or a matrix. Doing that and plotting in the time domain again, we can see that the linear trend has been removed. Okay, so next we would like to remove all the high frequency components from the signal. In order to design a filter, a low pass filter to do this, we'd first like to know where the useful information of the signal lies. So we can use the p-welch function, which would give us a power spectral density estimate. So for this example, we know that the useful information of the ECG signal um, is only the low frequency components. So we can design the filter to cut off all frequencies above about 75 hertz. So there are two methods to design filters using MATLAB. The first is a programmable method, 
where you can specify the parameters and then use fdesign.lowpass. The next is an interactive method using an app. So that this that, that is what we are going to do in this example to show just how easy it is. So we can go to apps and then select the filter designer. Okay, so once in the filter designer, we can specify the parameters like we want a low pass filter. We are going to use an IR filter for this example. You can specify the order as 7. And then the sampling frequency for this example is 2000 Hz. And as specified previously, we would like to cut off at 75 Hz. We can click on design filter. So this gives us the nice magnitude response of the filter. And we can see below or above rather 75 Hz, the signal cuts off. So we can click on these buttons at the top to get more information of the filter. Like this just gives informa information. You can see the filter is stable and a lot of other parameters. We can see the pole zero plot by clicking this button. Here we can see all the poles and zeros lie within the unit circle, so we can see they are stable here as well. You can even see the impulse response of the filter. Just looks like this. So all of this information of the filter we can see by click, simply clicking buttons at the top here, which makes it really easy to work and work with and analyze filters in MATLAB. So if we want to use this filter, we can click on File Export. We can export it as an object and call it D for this example. Okay, so to filter the signal, we can just use filter and D, the variable we just created. And applying that and plotting the new power spectral density of the signal. We can see that above 75 Hertz, the signal gets attenuated quite considerably. So the filter did exactly what we expected it to do. And now we can plot the filter in the time domain again. And this will give us this result. And we can see that the filter now delayed the signal by some margin. So in order to remove this delay, we can use the filt filt function, which is a very funny name, but it basically just filters the signal in the forward direction and in the backward direction as well, and thereby compensating the delay. So applying the filt filt function and plotting the signal in the time domain again, we see that the delay is compensated for and only the low frequency components are seen in the signal. So now we can work with this ECG signal. Okay, this concludes this example. So going back, let's have a quick recap. We looked at how to detrain an ECG signal. We visualized the power content of the signal. We designed and applied a low pass IR filter. And we compensated the delay introduced by the filters. So next we're going to look at two common application examples. The first is how to detect a distorted signal in noise. So for this example we are going to look at a nonlinear amplifier that introduces third order harmonic distortion. So we can model this amplifier by using white noise using the random function and a polynomial of order 3. So for this example, the sampling frequency is 3.6 kilohertz and the signal is 180 hertz. So creating the amplifier signal and then plotting it over a non-noisy signal. You can see this is how it looks with a lot of added noise spikes. So to work with the signal again, we can plot the power spectral density by using the p-welch function. This gives us this result. So because this is a third order amplifier, we know it will give us a DC component, one fundamental frequency component, and 
harmonics of twice and three times the frequency of the signal. So we can see this, but we would like to visualize this a bit better. So we can use the find peaks function again by plotting the four highest peaks. Doing that, we can verify that the peaks are where we expect them to be. And just to make sure that we have the right peaks, um, we can see the components here are DC component, fundamental frequency component, and then two and three times frequency. So it is important to understand how the p-welch function works if we would like to visualize our data in different ways. So the p-welch function divides the signal into different segments and then calculates the periodogram of each section and then averages. By default, the function takes eight segments with 50% overlap. For 10,000 samples, this gives us about 2,222 samples per segment. If we decrease this number, we can get shorter segments, which results in more averaging, but lower resolution. Plotting that, we can see the signal is smoother, but we cannot distinguish the harmonics. We can increase the number of samples per segment and this would give us longer segments and higher resolution but also more randomness. If we plot that, we can see the high harmonics but there is at least one spurious high frequency peak that is higher than some of the harmonics. Okay, so that concludes this example. Moving back. The last example, we're going to look at how to remove spikes from a signal. So if we have some, if we have the open loop voltage across an analog instrument in the presence of 60 hertz power line noise, and the signal looks like this in the time domain, we are only interested in this open loop voltage and not these transient spikes of the power line noise. So we can use the medfilt1 function, which is basically a nonlinear digital filtering technique that steps through the signal and replaces each value of the signal with the median of its neighboring values. Applying the medfilt1 function and plotting again, you can see the result of the signal is just the smooth signal and we can work with that very very simple moving back then that concludes the last two examples and just looking at a summary of what we did today we saw with the signal processing toolbox we can perform signal generation visualization and measurement we can do signal transformed from the time to the frequency domain we can design analog and digital filters and implement them can use statistical functions to visualize your data in different ways and we looked at a power spectral density estimation algorithm namely p welch and this isn't the only algorithm matlab has a lot of different um, power spectral density algorithms but we only looked at that one today so you're probably wondering how can optimum solutions help me well Optinum Solutions is the sole MathWorks accredited distributor of MATLAB and Simulink products in Southern Africa. The company boasts a wide range of solutions that are tailor-made for each problem. We also offer training in all MathWorks tools in order to equip our clients with skills required to solve business problems. Optinum Solutions have also have consultants that work with clients on project delivery, algorithm development, and reporting using the best software practice. The learning path associated with this demo is shown here. So a learning path is a collection of skill sets that equip you with a certain competency. So there are two paths you can take if you want to learn about signal processing. You can do it with MATLAB or with Simulink. For MATLAB you would need the fun MATLAB fundamentals which would provide you with basic training then you can do a signal processing with MATLAB course, which will provide you with signal analysis, measurement and visualization techniques. And then as a supplementary course, you can do 
control system designed with MATLAB and Simulink, which would accelerate the design processes for closed loop control systems. If you are only interested in the Simulink part of the course, you can do the signal processing for Simulink and then do the control system design with MATLAB and Simulink course as well. So once we are done here, there are a couple of things that you can do if you would like to enrich yourself. You can click on these links to take you to the MathWorks website where you can look at data analysis or algorithm development. Alternatively, you can download a trial of MATLAB if you would like to try some of these examples yourself. You can also ask for support because Optimum Solutions provides our customers with technical support and we are here to help if you have any questions about any field specific issue. We really strive to add value to the product and to the customers. You can also visit our website and look at the data analytics competency and at the training page. So this concludes this demo. I believe I have made it clear why MATLAB and by extension the signal processing toolbox provide very efficient and intuitive ways to work with data. This demo has only shown some of the features of this toolbox and there are many more to be discovered. Thank you very much.